Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture 14 of the course on multivariate data mining methods and applications. The title of this lecture is Statistical Analysis of PCA. In the last lecture, we have discussed different uh, examples of uh, high dimensional data and then we have also discussed how we can use the principal component analysis for reducing the dimension of the data without losing much information. In this lecture, we will discuss the statistical foundations of principal component analysis. In particular, we will discuss the least square interpretation of principal component analysis and principal component analysis as, as a variance maximization technique. In fact, uh, your basic objective is to provide a reduced rank approximation for the high dimensional data. And for that purpose, I will prove the escort young theorem, which is helpful in providing the reduced rank approximation. Now, we consider the statistical analysis used in principal component analysis. So, first we consider the population PCA and suppose x which is equal to x1, x2, xr transpose is random set of all unordered and correlated input variables and psi which is equal to psi1, psi2, psi t is a set of t where t is less than or equal to r ordered and uncorrelated linear projections of x. So, each of these psi j is a linear projection of x or x 1, x 2, x r and for i not equal to j psi i and psi j are uncorrelated. So, we can define psi j equal to b j transpose x or it is equal to b j 1 x 1 plus b j 2 x 2 so on b j r x r for all j equal to 1 to t, where b j is the jth coefficient vector, the coefficient vector corresponding to psi j. Then in principal component analysis, you replace x by psi x is of r dimension, psi is of t dimension and r is much greater than t. So, you want to reduce the dimension of the data and then we minimize the loss of information due to this replacement. So, on one hand you are reducing the dimension of the data, on the other hand you also want to minimize the loss of information due to this replacement. Now, suppose the expectation of x is mu x. So, mu x is the mean vector of x. Expectation of x minus mu x, x minus mu x transpose is equal to sigma x x. So, sigma x x is the dispersion matrix. Obviously, this dispersion matrix or variance coherence matrix is positive definite. Then in principal component analysis, the information contained in the data is equal to total variation of input variables. So, the information is measured by the total variation in all the input variables. Now, suppose 
lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda r, these are the eigenvalues of sigma x x, the variance covariance matrix of x. And then we write these eigenvalues in the form of this diagonal matrix and we denote it by capital lambda. So, lambda j is the jth eigenvalue of sigma x x and lambda j is greater than or equal to 0 for all j. And you, these eigenvalues are ordered also means we take lambda 1 greater than or equal to lambda 2 greater than or equal to so on lambda r. Now, sigma x x is positive definite. So, you can use the spectral decomposition theorem and using the spectral decomposition theorem, you can write sigma x x as u lambda u transpose, where u is an orthogonal matrix. So, that u u transpose is an identity matrix. Further, the columns of u are the eigenvectors of sigma x x. Say the jth column of u is the eigenvector corresponding to the jth eigenvalue lambda j. Then the total variation of original input variables is say summation j equal to 1 to r variance of x j or you can say trace of sigma x x. Uh, notice that uh, the diagonal elements of sigma x x give you the variances of x 1, x 2, so on x r. The first diagonal element is the variance of x 1, the second diagonal element is the variance of x 2 and so on. So, if you take the sum of all diagonal elements of sigma x x, you get summation j equal to 1 to r variance of x j and trace of sigma x x is equal to trace of lambda that is summation j equal to 1 to r lambda j, sum of all the eigenvalues. So, you can say that this sum of all the eigenvalues indicates the total information. in the data set. Now, selecting linear projections psi j is psi j is equal to b j transpose x is equivalent to choosing p j's. So, your basic problem is to select these b j's. Then the jth coefficient vector b j equal to b 1 j, b 2 j, so on b r j transpose and this is chosen so that the first t linear projections psi j, j equal to 1 to t of x are ranked in importance through their variances, variance of psi j and these variances are listed in decreasing order of magnitude. That is variance of psi 1 greater than or equal to variance of psi 2, so on greater than or equal to variance of psi t. So, basically your objective is you want to approximate this x equal to x 1, x 2, x r which is r dimensional by psi j is j equal to 1 to t or you want to reduce the dimension of the data from r to t. So, we arrange all these psi j's according to their variances the 
first projection psi 1 has the maximum variance, the second projection psi 2 has second maximum variance and so on. Then psi j is uncorrelated with psi k for all k less than j. So, whenever we try to find the coefficient b j corresponding to psi j, we keep in mind the constraint that it should be uncorrelated with all the psi k's for k less than j means psi 1, psi 2, psi j minus 1. Then the linear projections psi j's for j equal to 1 to t of x are known as the first t principal components of x. Then we can derive the principal components of x using one of these two criterions, say using a least squares optimality criterion or as a variance maximizing technique. Now, first we consider the least squares optimality criterion for obtaining these principal components. So, suppose B denotes the matrix B1, B2, Bt transpose. B1 is the coefficient vector corresponding to the first principal component and so on b t is the coefficient vector corresponding to the t th principal component. And we write all these uh, coefficient vectors in different columns and then we take transpose of this matrix and ultimately we get matrix B which is of order t cross r. So, B is a T cross R matrix of weights and obviously, T is less than or equal to R. Then linear projections psi j that is B j transpose x for j equal to 1 to T can be combined as psi equal to B x, where psi is equal to psi 1, psi 2, so on psi t, then we take transpose of this. So, this is T cross R matrix. Then your problem is to find mu and A which is R cross T matrix such that x is approximately equal to mu plus A psi in some least square sense. That is we want to select mu and A in such a manner that W t equal to expectation of x minus mu minus a psi transpose x minus mu minus a psi is minimum. So, you are approximating x by mu plus a psi. So, how much error is there? x minus mu minus a psi and then your least square criterion is you take x minus mu minus a psi transpose x minus mu minus a psi take expectation of this and then you minimize it with respect to the parameters. And for that purpose we use reduced rank regression. Now, L 2 norm of A is defined as say a 2 L 2 norm of A is lambda 1 A transpose A to the power half, where lambda 1 is the maximum eigenvalue of A transpose A to the power half. Now, we consider the Escort Young theorem for reduced rank approximation. So, suppose we consider a matrix A which is of order m cross n and rank of A is R. Then the singular value decomposition for A is 
a equal to u lambda v transpose which is equal to summation i equal to 1 to n lambda i u i v i transpose or summation i equal to 1 to r lambda i u i v i transpose because rank of a is r. So, only r eigenvalues of a are non zero all other eigenvalues are equal to 0. So, lambda i i equal to 1 to r are non zero singular values of a or eigenvalues of a. Now, we define an approximation a k of a. a k is equal to summation i equal to 1 to k lambda i u i v i transpose where k is less than or equal to r. So, your original matrix is a and you can write a as summation i equal to 1 to r lambda i u i v i transpose where lambda i is the singular value of a and you are approximating it by a k which is summation i equal to 1 to k lambda i u i v i transpose. So, uh, this matrix a k is of rank k. So, you are approximating a matrix of rank r by a matrix of rank k, where k is less than or equal to r. That is why this approximation is called reduced rank approximation. Now, we show that a k is the best rank k approximation of a. That is, if you take any other matrix of rank k, then a k is better than that matrix in the sense that if you take the norm of distance between a and that matrix, it is more than the norm of distance between a and a k. Now, suppose u i which is equivalent to u i a a transpose is the eigen vector corresponding to i th eigen value of a a transpose and v i is the eigen vector corresponding to i th eigen value of a transpose a. Then the Escort Young theorem is that A and B be M cross N matrices and rank of B equal to K, which is less than or equal to rank of A, which is R. Then norm of A minus B is always greater than or equal to norm of A minus K and norm of a minus k is lambda k plus 1. Lambda k plus 1 is the eigenvalue say you are considering eigenvalues up to lambda k in forming a k. Then the eigenvalue just after that, that is the maximum eigenvalue after lambda k is lambda k plus 1. So, lambda k plus 1 is the maximum eigenvalue after lambda k. So, in this sense, a k provides the best rank k approximation to a in the L2 sense. Now, to prove this result, we can write a minus a k as summation i equal to k plus 1 to n lambda i u i v i transpose. So, a is equal to summation i equal to 1 to n lambda i u i 
V i transpose and A k is equal to summation i equal to 1 to k lambda i u i V i transpose and then you take difference of these two which is this or you can write it as summation i equal to 1 to n minus k lambda i plus k u i plus k v i plus k dash. Uh, you get this expression just by taking say you take i star equal to i minus k or i equal to i star plus k. Then for i equal to k plus 1, i star is equal to 1 and then we just replace i star by i and for i equal to n, i star is equal to n minus k and here you have lambda i, you replace i by i star plus k or i plus k and uh, similarly here also we replace i by i plus k plus summation i equal to n minus k plus 1 to n lambda i hat u i hat v i hat transpose. So, we have these additional terms but here actually we are taking lambda i hat equal to 0 for all i equal to n minus k plus 1 to n. So, actually this term vanishes. So, lambda i hat is equal to 0 and also u i hat are orthogonal to u i plus k and v i hat is uh, these are also orthogonal to v i plus k. Then a minus a k is equal to summation i equal to k plus 1 to n lambda i u i v i transpose. This is the singular value decomposition of a minus a k. So, for a minus a k you get this singular value decomposition. Then norm of a minus a k is equal to the first singular value of its SVD singular value decomposition. We have norm of a minus a k equal to now the first singular value is for i equal to k plus 1 you get lambda k plus 1. Now, suppose there exist a matrix B which is of order m cross n with rank of B equal to k such that B provides a better rank k approximation for A in the sense that norm of A minus B is less than norm of A minus A k which is equal to lambda k plus 1. Then for any w belonging to R n, we have A minus B w norm of A minus B w is less than lambda k norm of w. Now, this implies that for any w belonging to the null space of B, we have norm of A minus B w equal to norm of A w because since w belongs to the null space of B, we get B w equal to 0. And further using the previous relationship, this relationship we obtain norm of A w less than lambda k plus 1 norm of w. Now, suppose w belongs to the vector space spanned by v 1, v 2, v k plus 1. So, this v k plus 1 denotes the vector space spanned by the eigenvectors v 1, v 2, v k plus 1. Then there exists constant c 1, c 2, c k plus 1 such that 
you can write w equal to summation i equal to 1 to k plus 1 c i v i. And then this follows that norm of a w is equal to summation i equal to 1 to k plus 1 c i a v i. You are taking w equal to summation c i v i. Now, a v i is equal to lambda i v i. So, you get summation i equal to 1 to k plus 1 mod c i lambda i and then norm of v i. Norm of v i is 1. So, you get summation i equal to 1 to k plus 1 mod c i lambda i. Now, this is greater than or equal to lambda k plus 1 norm of w. Now, rank of b is equal to k. So, the dimension of the null space of b is n minus k. Then dimension of v k plus 1 is k plus 1 because v k plus 1 is spanned by v 1 v 2 v k plus 1 these k plus 1 vectors. Now, now, this implies that the dimension of the null space of b plus dimension of v k plus 1 is greater than n. So, there exists a w not equal to 0 such that w belongs to the null space of b intersection v k plus 1. So, w belongs to both the null space of b as well as v k plus 1. Now, if you look at 1 and 2, this is 1, this is 2. Here you get a contradiction and you can always find such a vector w which belongs to both the null space of b as well as v k plus 1. Hence, we follow the result because if we assume that there is a better than k approximation provided by b then a k then it leads to a contradiction. So, a k provides the best than k approximation for a. Now, we come to this result. So, suppose uh, rank of b is less than or equal to k because ultimately we are interested in proving that a k provides a better than k approximation among all approximations of rank less than or equal to k. So, so far the by using the Escortian theorem we have proved that a k is better than b where rank of b is k. Now, we show that even if rank of b is less than k, still a k provides a better approximation. So, if rank of b is less than or equal to k, which is less than or equal to rank of a equal to r, then norm of a minus b is greater than or equal to norm of a minus a k, which is equal to lambda k plus 1. Now, this holds for rank of b equal to k, we have already proved it. Now, suppose rank of b is equal to k minus j and j lies between 1 to k, then by using the Scott Young theorem, norm of a minus b is greater than or equal to norm of a k minus j, which is equal to lambda k minus j plus 1 and lambda k minus j plus 1 is obviously greater than or equal to lambda k, which is equal to norm of a minus a k. So, this simple proof 
gives that a k is the best approximation among all matrices of rank k. So, to approximate a suppose you are interested in obtaining a rank k approximation then it is provided by a k. Now, we again come to the principal component analysis say suppose uh, x c is equal to x minus mu x we take deviation from mean mu x and suppose you define mu equal to i minus a b mu x. Then you can write w t equal to expectation of, of x minus mu minus a psi x transpose x minus mu minus a psi and uh, then we write psi equal to b x here and then we write a b equal to c. So, you get expectation of x minus mu minus c x transpose x minus mu minus c x and then we substitute mu equal to i minus a b mu x or mu equal to i minus c mu x or mu x minus c times mu x. So, when you write mu equal to mu x minus c mu x you get x minus mu minus c x equal to x minus mu x minus c x minus mu x. You just substitute the value of mu here mu equal to mu x minus c mu x and then we write x minus mu x equal to x c and uh, here also we write x minus mu x equal to x c. So, you get expectation of x c minus c x c transpose x c minus c x c and then we simplify it. So, you get this expression expectation of x c transpose x c minus x c transpose c x c minus x c transpose c transpose x c plus x c transpose c transpose c x c you get this expression and then using the result that trace of a b is equal to trace of b a we get this expression. So, we take x transpose after x c then here also we take x c transpose after x c and so on and then expectation of x c x c transpose is sigma x x. Here also it is sigma x x sigma x x and sigma x x and then you can write it as trace of c sigma x x to the power half minus sigma x x to the power half c sigma x x to the power half minus sigma x x to the power half transpose these two expressions are equal and then you have to minimize stability. Then using Escartian theorem we have minimum of W t if c sigma x x to the power half is equal to summation j equal to 1 to t lambda j to the power half v j v j transpose. Notice that sigma x x is equal to summation j equal to 1 to r lambda j v j v j transpose. So, sigma x x to the power half is equal to summation j equal to 1 to r lambda j to the power half v j v j transpose and uh, what you have to do you have to find the matrix C such that C times sigma x x to the power half provides a best 
rank T approximation for sigma x x to the power half. So, you get the value of C using Escort-Young theorem as summation j equal to 1 to t lambda j to the power half v j v j transpose. Notice that C is equal to a b and summation j equal to 1 to r lambda j to the power minus half v j v j transpose. For the values of v j for j equal to 1 to t and the values of v j for j equal to t plus 1 r. These values are uncorrelated with each other or you can say that suppose you write j dash here. So, for any j equal to 1 to t and j dash equal to t plus 1 to r v j dash v j is equal to 0 and making use of this we get c equal to summation j equal to 1 to t v j v j dash then lambda j to the power half lambda j to the power minus half will cancel out and we get this expression. And uh, you can write it as say v 1 v 2 v t v 1 transpose so on v t transpose and you write it equal to a b. So, this is your a this is your b. So, a t is this which is equal to v t transpose. Further mu t is equal to mu is equal to i minus a b mu x. So, if you are using t rank approximation then mu t is equal to i r minus a t v t mu x. V j is the eigenvector associated with the jth largest eigenvalue lambda j of sigma x x. So, the best rank t approximation to the original x is say x t hat equal to mu t plus c t x or you can write it as mu x plus you just substitute the value of mu t here. So, this is equal to mu x minus a t v t mu x plus c t x or this is equal to mu x plus a t v t is equal to c t x minus mu x. So, you get this best rank t approximation for x. Well, c t is equal to a t v t and uh, then a t v t is equal to summation j equal to 1 to t v j v j transpose. The minimum value of w t is equal to summation j equal to t plus 1 to r lambda j. You just substitute the values of c t and uh, sigma x x in the expression for w t. So, this is the sum of smallest r minus t eigenvalues of sigma x x. So, when you approximate x and use rank t approximation, then the loss of information is this much the sum of smallest r minus t eigenvalues of sigma x x and these are the first t principal components of x. Now, the covariance between psi i and psi j 
is equal to the covariance between psi i is equal to v i transpose x and psi j is equal to v j transpose x. So, the covariance between v i transpose x and v j transpose x. Now, this is equal to expectation of v i transpose x, x transpose v j or you can take x c here say. where x c is the deviation from mean. So, you get v i transpose sigma x x v j. Now, sigma x x v j is equal to lambda j v j and then you can take lambda j outside you get v i transpose v j. Then, when i is equal to j, v i transpose v i is equal to 1 and for i not equal to j, v i transpose v j is equal to 0 or you can write v i transpose v j equal to delta i j, you get the covariance as delta i j lambda j, your delta i j is equal to 1 if i equal to j and it is 0 otherwise and this is called chronicle delta. So, the variance of psi i is lambda i and for i not equal to j psi i and psi j are uncorrelated with each other. Lambda 1 is the largest eigenvalue of sigma x x and so the variance of psi 1 is lambda 1. Lambda 2 is the second largest eigenvalue of sigma x x and variance of psi 2 is lambda 2 and so on. Psi 1, psi 2, so on, psi t. These have variances in decreasing order and uh, these principal components are mutually orthogonal to each each other or mutually uncorrelated. All pairs of derived variables are uncorrelated that is covariance psi i psi j equal to 0 for all i not equal to j. Now, how will the first t principal components represent the r original variables in the lower dimensional space? Say you have observe that the total variance is lambda 1 plus lambda 2 so on plus lambda r. And if you are using t principal components, then out of this total variation, how much variation you are capturing through these t principal components? Lambda 1 plus lambda 2 plus so on plus lambda t. So, how much is the loss of information? it is lambda t plus 1 plus lambda t plus 2 so on plus lambda r. So, this ratio is the ratio of the amount of variance which you are not able to capture or the amount of information which you are not able to capture when you use the first t principal components divided by the total variation in the data. So, this is the proportion of total variation in the input variables that is explained by last r minus t principal components. So, this is the proportion of loss of information when you are not using last r minus t principal components. If first t principal components explain a large proportion of total vari variation in x, then the ratio should be small. This numerator should be small in comparison to the denominator in this case. Now, we consider PCA as a variance maximization technique. So, these are the coefficients vector v j is 
and we choose these coefficients factor in a sequential manner so that variance of psi j is equal to b j transpose sigma x x b j. These are arranged in descending order subject to the normalizations say b j transpose b j is equal to 1 and they are uncorrelated with the previously chosen derived variables that is covariance between psi i and psi j is equal to say b i transpose sigma x x b j and this is 0 for all i less than j. So, psi j is uncorrelated with the previously derived principal components. Now, we form the function say f b 1 equal to b 1 transpose sigma x x b 1 minus lambda 1 1 minus b 1 transpose b 1. This is the restriction b 1 transpose b 1 is equal to 1. So, we are using the method of Lagrange's multipliers. Then we differentiate f b 1 respect to b 1 and then we set the differential coefficient equal to 0 for the maximum. So, when we differentiate f b 1 with respect to b 1, we obtain say f b 1 is equal to b 1 transpose sigma x x b 1 minus lambda 1 b 1. We we differentiate it with respect to b 1, we get twice sigma x x b 1 minus twice lambda 1 b 1. Now, if b 1 is not equal to 0, lambda 1 must be chosen to satisfy this condition determinant of sigma x x minus lambda 1 i r equal to 0. So, lambda 1 is the largest eigenvalue of sigma x x. So, we take this lambda 1 as the largest eigenvalue of sigma x x. Ultimately, the solution for this equation are the eigenvalues of sigma x x. And uh, since the first with the first principal component, you are interested in uh, explaining the largest variance or you are interested in capturing the largest variance. So, we take the largest eigenvalue of sigma x x here and b 1 is the eigenvector v 1 associated with this largest eigenvalue. From here, you obtain v 1. Then you have to obtain the second principal component psi 2. Then we choose a second set of coefficients b 2 for the next projection psi 2. So, that variance of psi 2 is greater than or equal to variance of psi k for all k equal to 3, 4, so on t and covariance of psi 1, psi 2 is equal to 0. So, we maximize variance of psi 2 which is equal to b 2 transpose sigma x x b 2 subject to the restriction that b 2 transpose b 2 equal to 1 and b 1 transpose b 2 is equal to 0. So, we form this function. You have to maximize this part subject to these restrictions. Lambda 2 and mu are the Lagrange's multipliers. So, we differentiate f b 2 with respect to b 2 and we get twice sigma x x minus lambda 2 i r b 2 plus mu b 1 equal to 0. Then we multiply this equation by b 1 transpose. So, we obtain twice b 1 transpose sigma x x b 2 plus mu equal to 0. Now, this implies that mu is equal to 0. 
this part is equal to 0 b 1 transpose sigma x x b 2 because b 1 transpose sigma x x b 2 is equal to lambda 1 b 1 transpose b 2 and b 1 b 2 are orthogonal to each other. So, you get 0 here. So, mu is also 0. So, lambda 2 has to satisfy this condition and hence lambda 2 is the second largest eigenvalue of sigma x x and b 2 is the eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2. And we proceed further. So, the third coefficient b 3 is the third eigenvector v 3 which is corresponding to the third largest eigenvalue lambda 3 and so on. So, in this lecture we have discussed the valuable insights for the statistical analysis of P C A. In particular, we have discussed the least square criterion and variance maximization criterion for the interpretation of principal component analysis. In the next lecture, we will consider sample PCA, how to estimate principal components using the sample observations. So, here I am going to stop. Thank you. Hello and welcome to this piece of literary snippet. As a student of English literature, the kind of poetry that we are most likely to encounter is perhaps the sonnet. Now, a sonnet, as some of us might already know, is a poem which is composed by putting together 14 lines of verse. And this style of poetry was first popularized by a poet named Petrarch, who lived in Italy during the 14th century. Now, legend has it that Petrarch once saw a very beautiful lady by the name of Laura, and uh, Petrarch was so enamored by the lady that he wanted to compose poems to celebrate his love for her. But there was a problem because uh, marriage was impossible. Petrarch himself was an ordained priest and that prohibited him from marrying. And the lady herself was a married woman. But nevertheless, Petrarch went ahead to immortalize the beloved and his love for that lady in poetry and the form that he chose was the sonnet. Since then, sonnets have traditionally been written about ladies who are of unparalleled beauty and about poets who are hapless lovers and who know that their love for their beloved would have to remain unrequited forever. Now, in England, the sonnet form came around 16th century and its first practitioners were people like uh, Sir Henry Hard, the Earl of Surrey and Sir Thomas Wyatt. However, it was William Shakespeare who was to prove the greatest of English sonneteers. And in fact, the charm of those sonnets that Shakespeare wrote 400 years from now uh, still can be felt. And if I read out to you one of Shakespeare's sonnets, you will appreciate this better. This sonnet is usually known by the title, Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day, which is also the first line with which the poem begins.
shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometime too hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is his gold complexion dimmed, and every fair from fair sometime declines. By chance, or nature's changing course, untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou owest. Nor shall death brag, thou wanderest in his shade, when in eternal lines to time thou growest. So long as men can breathe, or eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Now, as you might have noticed, that very much like uh, the Petrarchan sonnet, this poem too speaks of an idealized lover who is more beautiful than a lovely summer's day. But also notice how, in the last few lines, the poem subtly shifts from praising the beloved to praising the poet himself. It is the poet who is going to produce the lines of poetry which will preserve the beloved's glory forever. And people will continue reading them even after the beloved has died. As the last couplet of the poem suggests, so long as men can breathe or eyes can see, so long lives this. And here this, of course, refers to the verse that Shakespeare composes and which we are reading today, 400 years later. So long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Shakespeare is well known for these kind of subtle plays with the conventions, these kind of subtle reversals of what is expected conventionally. But nothing is more striking than the sonnets that he composed on a dark lady. In these poems, we do not meet the traditional fair, idealized beauty, but rather a woman whose appearance might even be described as ugly. Here is a sample. My mistress's eyes are nothing like the sun. Coral is far more red than her lips is red. If snow be white, why then her breasts are done? If hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see I in her cheeks. And in some perfumes is there more delight than in the breath that from my mistress reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet well I know that music hath a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go. My mistress, when she walks, treads on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she belied with false compare. As you can see, the beloved described in this poem is nowhere as beautiful as a beloved of the first poem. Yet, the point that Shakespeare is making here is that though the image of the beloved is not as beautiful as it was in the previous poem, it doesn't stop her from being an object of love. Love, Shakespeare insists, has very little to do with the outward appearance of a person. And in many ways, this de-idealized beloved is perhaps a person with whom a more intimate engagement is possible. She is definitely a more human person, a person who treads on the ground, just like all of us do. See you in the next episode of Literary Snippet.